What's up, everybody? Week one is here. Today, we have the Rams and the Bills squaring off on Thursday night football to kick the season off. Awesome. Yes! I am back! Although we just drafted our fantasy teams, you may need some help on the waiver wire for week one. Today, we're going to be looking at players that are owned in under 33% of leagues. I'm not really helping you if I say, hey, George Pickens is a great pickup, because let's be honest, if you're in a league with 10 to 12 people, or if not more, he should be rostered already. So there's no sense in giving you obvious guys that should be rostered. So with that being said, let's dive right into it. Every week, I'm going to do a streaming quarterback, and for me this week, 31% owned is Baker Mayfield. I personally think you should play whatever quarterback you drafted in fantasy. I wouldn't be starting Baker Mayfield unless I had to. But for whatever reason you need another quarterback, week one, I think Baker Mayfield is the guy. Baker is in a new situation this year as the starter for the Panthers, who have a lot of weapons. Christian McCaffrey, DJ Moore, Robbie Anderson, and Terrace Marshall have been you know, notable weapons in the past. Although I don't think Baker is a great quarterback, he's able to run an offense. He has the weapons to be successful, to throw for 200 yards and two touchdowns, which is all we're asking for out of a waiver quarterback. And... Let's be honest, it's the revenge game. They played Cleveland week one. So I think this dude's going to try to go into Cleveland and kick some ass in this revenge game. And that's why I had Baker to Mayfield as my streaming quarterback for the week. Moving on to running backs, I don't really have anybody that I would say I'm eager to start in week one because that's just, you're not going to find that on the waivers. But Jeff Wilson is one guy with 17% owned. The 49ers have really gotten rid of everybody this offseason. Raheem Mostert's gone, Trey Sermon, Jamichael Hasty, and plenty of other backs over the years. But the one man who remains constant is Jeff Wilson. While he isn't exciting, he's not even the starter behind Elijah Mitchell, he has the trust of Kyle Shanahan. I don't know what it is, he just he stays on the roster and he keeps getting the opportunities. We saw Elijah Mitchell have a real a really hard time staying healthy in 2021. So if Wilson can, you know, just get some playing time, maybe even back up Elijah Mitchell and get some playing time, maybe some receptions. He can be a great stash and a potential, you know, really valuable handcuff in fantasy football for this year at just 17% owned. My next guy is Rex Burkhead, 12% owned. And I know you might go, seriously, dude, Rex Burkhead? The Texans have released Marlon Mack from the active roster and the practice squad, which leaves the rookie shooting star Damian Pierce and Rex Burkhead as the only two options really on the roster for the Texans. And while I expect the Texans to ride Pierce as the RB1, that doesn't mean Burkhead can't be the catching down back and starter if Pierce goes down or honestly isn't very good because he was only a fourth round pick and not highly touted out of Florida. In the last four games of 2021, Burkhead got 60% or more of the touches. He carried the ball 66 times and caught another 12 passes, so the workload can be there for Rex Burkhead, who isn't an awesome back, but is a guy who can catch some passes and find the end zone. Moving on to wide receiver, Alec Pierce at 30%. Alec Pierce is a rookie who could be the number two wide receiver behind Michael Pittman in Indy. Paris Campbell has never been healthy, and if Alec Pierce has really no competition there. If Pierce can step right in and play right away behind Michael Pittman, he'll be of value as a guy who went undrafted in fantasy drafts with Matt Ryan under center. I just think that's a steal at 30%. The last receiver I want to talk about is Wendell Robinson, 29% owned. This could be a mess, but I don't know if Kenny Dolladay is good anymore. Kadarius Toney is a threat to get into a fight or injured on every snap of the game, and Sterling Shepard is always injured and is currently behind Robinson on the Giants' depth chart. Robinson has the chance to be a week one flyer. I don't know if he's good. I don't know if this Giants' offense is going to be good. And look, if he isn't targeted in week one or two, you know, give him a week or two to maybe get something. But if it doesn't happen, you just drop him. But if he does play right away and maybe they give Kenny Galladay the boot and they move Robinson up the depth chart, hey, any starting receiver on any team in the NFL is worth being on a roster. And while I'm recording this video, I just thought, hey, maybe you need to play somebody this week. You don't need someone that you can stash. You need someone who you th you're pretty sure is going to get some playing time and actually be a part of an offense. So, AJ Green is for me. Now, I know you go, oh my God, I really don't want to mess with AJ, AJ's situation. AJ Green's been falling off these last couple of years. But in Arizona, he was the wide receiver two last year behind Christian Kirk when DeAndre Hopkins didn't play. Rondell Moore, I don't know if the dude can even run routes. He runs bubble screens and is like a gadget guy. So if AJ Green can just 
you know, actually be the starter next to Marquise Brown, be the outside guy. He could have a couple big catches, maybe score a touchdown and get lucky. If you need someone who's really going to play that isn't owned heavily, A.J. Green could be your guy. And when you talk about a streaming quarterback, we're doing the same thing with tight ends. If you don't have someone that's consistent week by week, maybe you didn't even draft one and you had to drop somebody to pick one up, whatever the case may be, and you need one for week one, I think Hayden Hurst is your guy. He had a couple of good games for Atlanta back in the day and has been kind of in the backseat ever since. But now he goes to Cincinnati and he takes the C.J. Uzama role, who had a couple good games every year and specifically last year. Hey, I'm not saying Hayden Hurst is going to be awesome for fantasy every single game, and he might not be. But I think in a Joe Burrow offense who really likes to spread the ball around and throw the ball, maybe Hayden Hurst can have a good week one where he gets six targets, catches four or five passes for 40, 50 yards. That's all you can really ask for out of your tight end, especially someone you're streaming. So maybe Hayden Hurst is the guy. All right, and those are my streamers for week one of the NFL fantasy season. I'm so happy we're here, and I'm glad you guys are here watching the video, sticking with the channel. If you liked the video today, leave a like down below, subscribe for more content. There'll be plenty of fantasy football coming over the season. So I appreciate you guys watching, and I'll see you guys next time.